Hello, welcome. Uh, this is a video, or one of our AutoCAD videos, uh, talking about some of the models we're going to be drafting. Uh, this model is going to be the, the doghouse. So, let's, let's talk about our, our layout here for just a minute. What I did is I chose my template layout. You want to make sure that your uh, UCS icon is showing. And you also want to make sure your pull tracking is on. So if we go back to our A-size layout, you can see that our uh, title block is uh, the way it was before. Just say concrete masonry unit down in the lower right-hand corner. Because the changes I made to my concrete masonry unit, I like those changes. I want to have those uh, available in my template file. So I saved it as a CMU. Then I turn around and saved it as my template file. Erase the CMU. Then I turn around and saved it yet one more time as the doghouse. So that way my template file is up to date and it's ready to go for the next project. So let's go to model. And let's start. Let's pick the appropriate layer. You go to the home tab. Uh, we're going to pick uh, the A walls layer. And I'm going to start with a rectangle. And we're going to draw this out. So we're going to start that somewhat close to your uh, UCS icon. So you do want to make sure that that's on. And we're going to draw this out. And remember the polar tracking, that green line that goes off of the diagonal showing you an angle? We don't want that angle. We want coordinates. So we want to make sure you don't see that. And we're going to type in 4 feet 4. So 4 single quote, 4 double quote, or you could just do 4 period. AutoCAD will always remember, that's a test question by the way, AutoCAD will always remember that if you enter a number it's going to remember inches rather than feet. So you don't have to have that double quote there. Now we're going to tab it, 3 feet, 3 single quote, and then 3, enter. And that should give us uh, our rectangle that defines uh, the base of our doghouse. So because this, these are polylines, if you click on it, it comes out as one unit, as we talked about in class. I'm going to go ahead and explode this, just because I want to have, uh, I want to be able to break that apart and take this line on top and have that line as a, as a regular line and not have a stack line there. So we're going to go ahead and explode it. And we're going to take that line. If you take the difference between uh, 6 feet, which is the bottom of the roof, and the 4 feet 4 inches, which is the, the base of the doghouse, or the length of this line. You can confirm that length too, by the way. If you go over here to your properties manager, your properties palette, and look over here, you can see what the length of that line is without having to put a dimension on it. We're going to take that difference and uh, we're going to expand it and uh, make that 4 foot 4 line into uh, a 6 foot line. So 4 foot 4 is uh, 48 plus 4 is 52. If we go from 52 to 72, it's real easy math, it's 20 inches. 10 inches on either side. We're going to go ahead and uh, stretch this out by 10 inches. It's a little tricky sometimes if you type in 10 inches, make it go out 10 inches because sometimes it shrinks by 10 inches. I don't understand that. So if you type in like negative 10 inches, it, it'll it'll go out there. So let's type in negative 10. Yeah, it expands it out by 10. And this one should be positive 10. But again, if you do that, it just doesn't work. So you, let's just erase that thing and. Just do a six foot line. So let's go out six feet, stretch a line out, go out to six feet. And this is by no means the only way you can build these things. There's always multiple ways to do things in AutoCAD. So this is just one way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line and I'm going to move that. Take that middle grip of that line and move it down here to the midpoint of our line down at the base of our doghouse. And then we're going to move it up. So go to the move command. Pick the intersection, the endpoint of that line, and move it up here. So now we have that six foot line in the proper location. So we're going to do the same thing with that three foot line. That uh, denotes the top of the doghouse. So we're going to type in three single quotes. Take that line, the same method we used before. Bring it down here. We're going to move that up a specific amount. So that amount is the uh, height of the doghouse is four foot ten inches, which is 48 plus 10, that's 58 inches. And um, the height of the side is 3 foot 2 inches. 36 plus 2 is 38. So 38 to 58 is a difference of 20 inches. So we're going to go ahead and move that up 20 inches. So type in 20. And it's all set to go. Connect the signs. Spacebar. Back to the line command. Spacebar. That gets that done. So we're going to draw a little bit of reference geometry. We're going to draw a line down here on the bottom. We're going to go in 12 inches in a specified direction. And we're going to go up two feet. So two single quotes. And we're going to go back and erase that reference geometry. And now this line is going to be symmetric uh, about this uh, rectangle here that we drew. So we're going to go to the mirror command. We're going to mirror that over. Midpoint for one end of the line. Take a line that's straight up. Go to enter. And then we got that done. Now we're going to draw some reference geometry, just like we did in the bottom. 
and we're going to draw some reference geometry in regard to the arc that's going to go over. So I'm going to draw a line that's going across, and from the midpoint of that line, I'm going to draw another line up six inches. And we erase the line on the bottom down here. We're going to erase this to uh, this reference geometry too once we get to that point. But the arc we want to draw, and when you draw an arc, it gives you all sorts of uh, different parameters here: start end angle, start start or center start end, and so on and so forth. What we want with this is called a three-point arc. And the three-point arc is a start middle end, which is exactly the conditions we have. We have a start point, we have a middle point. And we have an endpoint down here, so we're going to pick three-point arc. And it defaults to three-point arc when we first start with it, so we're going to pick start, middle, and end. And somebody in class here today didn't get this quite right. For some reason, arc was coming down here in the bottom. So if you do that, just go ahead and mirror it. Picking this as a mirror endpoint, and that as a mirror endpoint. And it should mirror the arc from one side to the other. So our house is done. Let's go to the A-size layout, see if we can find it in our viewport. Doesn't look like we can, so let's take our viewport. We're going to unlock it and go inside of it and do a zoom extents. Z enter, E enter, and should put our house right there. So now we're going to do a little bit of iteration. I clicked outside of that viewport in paper space. I'm going to select the viewport within paper space and go through the iterative process of finding the right scale. And remember, it's standard scale. We're not changing annotation scale or custom scale. Scroll that down. Let's try half an inch is equal to a foot. That's a little small, so let's go up one, let's go to one inch is equal to a foot, and I think that's the one that's going to work for us. Yep, looks good. Let's go ahead and lock it, and take our viewport and stretch it out a little bit so our model is a little bit in the center. We're going to need some room for the dimensions too, and that's pretty well centered. If it isn't centered, you might want to move that a little bit. I'm just going to move mine over just a little bit. Okay, let's go back to model space and uh, model. So remember our, our scale? Is one inch is equal to a foot. That's a 12 scale factor. So remember, we go to annotate, go to dimension style, go to modify. We're going to take our fit option and make that instead of four, which is what it was for the CME. We're going to make that 12, and then go to OK and close. Go back to the home tab, pick the appropriate dimension layer, linear dimension. We're going to start with the smaller dimension first in the bottom, spacebar. Do the total length dimension uh, for the second one. So you want to make sure that your larger dimensions go on the outside and the smaller dimensions go on the inside. So with that in mind, let's continue on with the side. This should be two feet. And verify this with the drawing on the website. This should be two feet six inches. You want to make sure your dimension lines do not overlap on your model lines. In the next dimension, we're going to pick that point and this point and bring that one out. That should be four feet, or I'm sorry, three feet. Uh, is it three feet two inches? I thought it was, but this one is three feet three inches, so we're going to change that scale on that. And then over here, we're going to do a total height dimension. Four feet eleven inches. What is that all about? I made that wrong. But we're going to fix that, and the way we fix that is with the stretch command. So... I think once we get this thing down to 3 feet 2 inches, this will also shrink down to the proper length of uh, 4 feet uh, uh, 10 inches. So let's put that final dimension on top. This is a good way to verify that you've made your drawing correctly, you made your model correctly. Let's go to stretch. We're going to stretch the very top of this. You go to the stretch command on the modify section of the home tab. And we're going to pick a pick box window that's going to include just the top of the roof and nothing else. Spacebar or enter, select a distance, and we're going to go down one. I like to select my, put my cursor off to the side so it doesn't interfere with any other object snaps that might be out there, and then enter. So that's now three feet two inches. This is four feet ten inches, and all the other dimensions are correct. Let's go to my A size layout and take a look at that. Need to adjust my viewport a little bit just to accommodate those dimensions. And have that dimension on the bottom that needs to be shown, so I'm going to do move. Move this up just a little bit, stretch the viewport down a little bit to show that bottom dimension, and that looks like it's pretty square in there. Zoom extents fills up the screen, and uh, you know how to update your toggle block. You should go ahead and do that to update the name, your model number, the date if you need to, and the scale. So we'll save that for another video, and thank you for joining me.